Okay, so the training season has officially kicked off and we have multiple classes and conferences already booked. So with that comes a lot of traveling. And since this year we're gonna be starting off literally right in the middle of tornado season, I figured why not talk about it as well as how NOAA radio kind of comes into some of our preparedness planning. So let's get into it. Okay, so let me just start this one off by letting you know that in the next video that we're going to be doing, I'm going to go over some of our planning and really get into some of our communications planning when we go out for extended trips like this. But before getting into all of that detailed info, I figured it really wouldn't take a, you know, to hurt anything to take a look at like a 30,000 foot view of our focus and our, you know, main intent of our planning during our travel over these next few months. So if you weren't familiar here in the United States, we literally have a tornado season and it's basically just a time when tornadoes are likely to occur. And that's really due just because of heightened weather activity, particularly in regions that are prone to severe storms. And this occurs during the spring and early summer months, typically from March through June. So we are literally in the thick of it right now. Now, this period coincides with a clash of moist, warm air from the Gulf of America. And then cooler, dry air from the north. And this really creates just perfect conditions for severe thunderstorms as well as tornado formation. Now you've probably heard of Tornado Alley and these are the regions of the Central Plains, the Midwest, the Southeast. But don't think for a second, if you aren't near any of these regions that you're out of the woods. Tornadoes have been recorded in all 50 states, and it was less than a year after I left the FDNY that a tornado hit Queens, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, it was only an EF1, which, just real quick, uh, if you didn't know, EF stands for Enhanced Vegeta, and it is the scale that measures the intensity of tornadoes all the way up to an EF5, but yeah, so these things can literally happen anywhere. Oh my god! This is a tornado. The ferocious storms moved in fast with 100 mile an hour winds right at the height of rush hour. New York City's famous skyline blazed with lightning, 300 strikes in just 15 minutes. Trees, some four stories high, ripped from their roots, taking the pavement with them in all five boroughs of Manhattan. The wind was also powerful enough to flip tractor trailers and snarl traffic to a standstill. One woman who pulled over to ride it out was killed by a falling tree. Earlier Thursday, the same storm system moved through Ohio. 11 tornadoes were reported, destroying homes, leaving one person dead. Now, when it comes to tornadoes and how to prepare for them, how many times have I said, and will continue to say, information, which is achieved via communication, is always key. And one of the best things you can do for your tornado preparedness is to stay informed of what's going on on the weather around you. And you know whether that is achieved by signing up for alerts through NOAA or FEMA or by monitoring weather reports, either from your TV, your you know music radio, uh, a VHF radio, which hopefully you have the NOAA frequencies pre-programmed in there, or even by a dedicated NOAA weather radio, which can actually alert like a pager when a severe weather alert is issued. New Jersey has issued a tornado warning. For Speaking of weather alerts, something that I think would be good to just mention is the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. So a watch just means that the conditions are favorable for tornadoes. And basically this is, you know, when you should be staying alert. A tornado warning, that means that a tornado either, you know, has been spotted or at least indicated on radar and you should take immediate shelter. And if I could just back up a second uh, real quick, I mentioned having the NOAA weather frequencies in your radio. If anyone isn't familiar with what NOAA weather radio is, so first off, NOAA stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And basically, way back when in the 60s, the US Weather Bureau began broadcasting marine weather information in Chicago and New York on two VHF radio stations as an experiment. 
once they realized how much of a success this was, they expanded the service to the general public that, you know, was kind of focused on those living in coastal regions. And in the 70s, the weather reports were really designed for boaters, fishermen, and travelers to, you know, quickly receive like life saving weather bulletins. Now, currently, there are about a thousand or so stations operated in all 50 states Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, Spain. Oh, and uh, they have an over 95% effective coverage. In addition to the weather stuff, and I'm still kind of trying to sell you on why you should have the NOAA frequencies in your radio, um, I would consider these vital, like these frequencies being vital in your radio because. Yes, they can give weather forecasts without interruptions, but NOAA actually works in cooperation with the FCC's emergency alert system, and they will also broadcast civil emergency information in conjunction with federal, state, and local emergency managers. They have the ability to broadcast alerts and post-event information for all type of hazards like earthquakes, wildfires, chemical spills, nuclear power plant emergencies, and even amber alerts or 911 outages and on and on and on. So, you know, just round them out. Um, and if you weren't also familiar, the NOAA weather frequencies are between 162.400 to 162.550. Now, beyond the staying aware and being prepared part, you know, with your necessities like food and water, if you do find yourself caught in a tornado, I think, you know, pretty much everybody knows first thing you want to do is seek shelter, try to, you know, get away from any doors and windows. Usually everybody says get into a basement and that's great, but that's usually where a lot of the information stops. So just to add a little bit more to that to help you as best we can, um, stuff that we like to say is, you know, find things that can help shield your body. So, you know, if you have access to a big, thick, heavy mattress that you can prop up, heavy blankets, or, you know, even if you have your hard plates and helmets can even play a role here. Again, if stuff's going to be coming in down on you, it's not going to hurt to have those things on. In addition to that, you know, once the tornado is over, the first priority for all the doers out there is probably the most important thing after communication is providing medical. And, you know, medical has really come into its place in the preparedness and tactical communities. And it's one of those things that just like comms, there is a place for this, not only as a vital necessity, but also is something that you're probably going to have the opportunity to, to utilize these skills throughout your entire life. In addition to everything else, you guys know I'm also a paramedic and believe me, there is no shortage of people getting hurt on a daily basis. So find good training, get that skill set. Speaking of those skill sets, we are currently out and about doing training literally all over the place, which is kind of was the whole motivation for doing this video and the next one or two videos that's going to come after this. Uh, so if you're interested in trying to jump in any of our training, please shoot us an email, send us an inquiry. We'll see what we can do to accommodate you. Also, be sure to check out the websites, ranchstrategies.com, as well as medicineandbadplaces.com. Any gear that you may need, uh, tactical gear, medical gear, shirts, hats, whatever it is, make sure you go to the medicineandbadplaces.com store. But before you do, shoot us an email at info at ranchstrategies.com, and we'll hook you up with a discount code for virtually anything on there. All right. Well, you know, like I said, stand by for the next video, which is going to get much more in depth on our comms planning for all of this travel. And with that, as always, be safe.